Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Increase Profitability and Limit Competition by Integrating New Entrance Control Technology. Today we have with us Larry Reed, CEO of ZK Techo USA. ZK Techo is a leading global manufacturer of access control and entrance control systems who specialize in biometrics. ZK Techo has been a five-year PSA member vendor. Also joining us today is Scott Bohm. He is the Entrance Control Business Development Manager at ZK Techo USA. Scott is a 20-year loss prevention manager who worked with some of the largest retailers in the U.S. He is an expert in both access control and entrance control technology. As security hardware is becoming increasingly more commoditized, it becomes challenging for integrators to maintain profitability and limit competition. ZK Techo returns profitability and limits competition for PSA members by offering integrated entrance control solutions. With ZK Techo entrance control solutions, PSA members can use either traditional HID readers or hybrid bi biometric readers for greater security and convenience. Long-range face recognition provides the ultimate in hands-free security and convenience. Authorized users simply look at the camera to unlock the door. In today's webinar, we will follow a visitor as they enter a parking lot, get scanned by a metal detector, step through a turnstile, get processed by the security desk, and finally, access the elevator. When offered as an integrated solution, PSA members maximize their profit profitability and limit their competition. My name is Julie Rolls. I am the training manager with PSA, and I will be moderating today's call. I have just a few quick housekeeping items before I hand it over to Larry and Scott. First, if you have not already done so, please mute yourself. If you happen to have any questions throughout the course of this presentation, please type them into the chat panel and we'll have time for Q&A at the end of this presentation. If you happen to run into any technical difficulties, I will also be monitoring chat for this and do my best to get you back up and running should you have any problems. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Larry and Scott. Gentlemen? Hey, Julie. Well, thanks so much for the kind introduction. Uh, I know that was uh, pretty much a mouthful. <laughs> That's a challenge we have at ZK. Um, you, during this presentation, you're going to see just some of the many, many products we've introduced to the market the past 20 years. And uh, what's really interesting enough is we manufacture everything ourselves. And that's why we continue to be the price leader with every single product release we have because we're not beholden to any third parties. So um, hence the long introduction. However, for the sake of this audience and brevity, we're just going to focus on about four or five products um, which uh, comprise our entrance control um, product line. So uh, let me kick this off. Um, as mentioned, the title of this, of course, is Increasing Profitability and Maximizing Client Engagements by Leveraging Entrance Control Technology. And I normally begin this presentation with posing just a few questions, and, and these questions are really um, pretty much have in mind uh, rookie sales people. A lot of the PSA members, of course, have new blood, and sometimes they're very quick to jump uh, to answering questions without necessarily understanding the overall opportunity. And with that, sometimes you'll leave money on the table. So, uh, again, no insult to those seasoned professionals, but please do uh, make sure your young people are keeping in line um, some, in, uh, some of these questions. So, how can I maximize my client engagement? Well, of course, um, it requires that you thoroughly understand the entire problem of your client. And that gives you the opportunity then uh, to inform your client of all possible products and services. And again, this ensures that you're not walking away leaving any money on the table because you truly understand uh, the entire uh, problem that your client is expressing. And of course, as mentioned, we have a very comprehensive product line. So whatever your client needs, you know, it's most assuredly that we do have an answer for you. Uh, the next is, well, how can I maximize my profits once I'm engaged? And um, Again, uh, you want to be able to sole or single source from one uh, vendor and distributor. And with ZK Techo and PSA, um, you can be assured that all the products are coming from a single source, and therefore you're assured of the lowest cost uh, putting all these products together. And uh, lastly, of course, how do I reduce the number of vendors? Well, <laughs> that's by shopping with a one-stop shop. Again, uh, having PSA as your uh, supplier and working with ZK Techo as your one-stop shopping vendor, um, that assures one-stop shopping, efficiencies, and of course, again, the brightest price 
on uh, any products or solutions that you're going to make available to your client. Uh, just a quick snapshot before we jump into the entrance control product line. Uh, as mentioned, it is a very, very comprehensive product line. Uh, to the far upper left, we have traditional um, card-based access control systems. We then introduce our fingerprint and card access systems with our in-bio kits. Uh, we also have um, HID and ZK access card readers. We have a variety of biometric readers. These are multi-biometric. Um, they do fingerprint and face and finger vein. Of course, still they do HID and PIN code. So every type of variety of biometric reader uh, we can make available to you. Uh, on the lower uh, uh, half of the slide, that's where we focus on the entrance control line, which we'll be touching upon in this presentation. Uh, we have a variety of long-range readers and, and license plate recognition readers as well. In addition to that, we have a variety of turnstiles, half-height, full-height, um, flat barrier, and, and um, traditional tripods. Um, most uh, recently, of course, we've introduced now walk-through metal detectors. And um, sadly, but in the news with all these uh, incidents of uh, shootings in um, public arenas and schools, uh, metal detectors are now becoming more and more the norm, almost as when you walk into an airport. Uh, I know years years ago, when I was a kid, if I ever saw a walk-through metal detector in front of a store or a restaurant, I'd be very worried. But nowadays, it's actually a source of comfort, knowing that uh, we're now having uh, visitors being screened. And we've also introduced x-ray inspection scanners. Um, these are not now only used at airports, but we brought them down to price points where you can now see them in uh, municipalities um, or any shipping logistics centers or the mail rooms of uh, corporate offices. So uh, again, just a snapshot of everything we have available. Quick background on ZK Teco, Julie mentioned to everyone in the audience, we have been with the PSA now uh, five years. Uh, we have over 4,000 employees operating of our 28 global offices. R&D centers all over the world. We now opened up our uh, Silicon Valley lab uh, two years ago where we introduced our new Silk ID biometric sensor technology. Uh, multiple manufacturing bases. In fact, we're even bringing manufacturing back to the United States. So uh, just, uh, you know, a lot of times the PSA members only know our presence in the U.S., but I can assure you we are a global dominant player. Um, as far as PSA members are concerned, we're located here in New Jersey. That's our building. Um, that's my team right now as of six months ago. We now have uh, almost 20 people here locally. In addition to that, we also have over 25 manufacturers' representatives throughout the country, which is why this map is color-coded. And here you can see some of those firms, about eight firms in total, um, again, spanning the entire country. So I can assure you we have the products and we have the sales uh, team um, to support your efforts. So here's a nice video. It's about three minutes in length. Um, hope you're patient, but you're going to actually see now how layering security is so important and how it all comes together. And uh, it all starts outside the building in the parking facility. We have a combination of both long-range readers and LPR to ensure that only authorized vehicles are permitted uh, access to the property. Upon entering the building, you enter an elevator, and now we have biometric elevator controllers to ensure the person coming into the elevator is only allowed on the floor they have authorization. We also combine fingerprint recognition technology for uh, time and attendance purposes. Here we have hands-free face recognition access control to enter the room. At the same time, we've got video camera linkage, so embedded in our autolog, you'll see a video clip or a photograph of that person. We're going to be discussing visitor management. This is our first version of visitor management software, where the person entering is allowed to show their own ID. We're going to show you how we've improved upon that. And of course, the employee is notified once the visitor arrives. Conference room is secured by palm vein recognition technology. Well, highly accurate, highly affordable uh, biometric modalities. Our access control software also has a uh, mobile app requirement in, in today's world where IT security administrators want to have access to everything going on from their phone.
Here we had a little drama. We have an intruder now entering the facility. We also have patrol systems that can be authenticated by guards, either with a card or a finger or a face. We have alarm linkages that can work with any third-party alarms. So that's a snapshot of our multi-biometric capabilities, all using our ZK Biosecurity platform. But what's really nice about all this technology, it's um, it basically works with all third-party systems as well. So um, if you have a client with a new facility that's open uh, from uh, beginning from scratch, you're going to see from this presentation, we have everything you could possibly need to secure the facility as well as the perimeter. Uh, however, if you do have larger clients that have existing systems in place, you can add on to that uh, system by layering the security with ZK products. And that's when we're going to talk about some of the biometric devices and, uh, and so on. So um, let's start at the perimeter. Uh, anyone ever having uh, ill intentions um, or breaking into a building, they, they usually show up with their car first. <laughs> so usually the, the parking facility is a good place to start. So at the parking lot perimeter, DK Techo offers a variety of long-range readers, which we'll touch upon. And that's why we call this our LR series, our long-range series of readers. And this series consists of a combination of long-range readers uh, and uh, credentials that work with those readers. And all for obvious reasons, of course, you want to restrict vehicular access to your parking facility. Um, also, we work with... Uh, um, um, with luxury homes. We had a very interesting, very rich person. He didn't like the uh, his, their spouse and kids using his parking garage. So he had a five bay garage and everyone had a different credential and only the door associated with that uh, family member's garage uh, uh, would actually open up. So you never know where they're gonna take this technology. And of course you want to provide um, auditing and logging of those vehicles as they enter the facility. So just a quick covering, uh, most all these readers um, really just differ based on range. We have our CARE 1000, that really reads up to two feet away, and that's really a personal RFID device. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Van Nuys Airport in LA, uh, they built a brand new terminal for some very famous Hollywood celebrities who didn't want to have to reach into their pockets to open up uh, the doors. So we have these two foot long, long range readers multiple readers all around the doorways so the uh, celebrities can just walk through and not have to reach for any credentials. Um, and then the uh, product line spans out the, uh, the uh, ZLR12, that's 12 meters or 40 feet away. So if you have a vehicle, you could have uh, the reader 40 feet from the vehicle. The uh, UHF30, that reads up to 100 feet away. And then the UHF60 reads actually up to 200 feet away. So, uh, you know, having the benefit of these readers means that you can eliminate now security guards and reduce all that labor. You now automate the uh, access to the perimeter security at the same time auditing and also alerting if you've got um, employees waiting for visitors. And we have various different sales tools like matrices that compare um, all the products. So these are available. I'm not going to go through them um, one at a time. Just make sure that you're aware uh, they're available. So after you've entered the facility, you've gotten through the uh, license, um, I'm sorry, the parking lot, you reach now the, uh, the uh, entrance. And typically, um, because we live in a still moderately safe world here, at least in the United States, you know, visitors typically go up to the uh, visitor desk. Well, now we recommend adding layers of security. And here pictured here is a gentleman walking through a walkthrough metal detector, and he's placed his bags on an x-ray baggage scanner. And again, this is what you normally see at airport security, but this is becoming more of the norm now in uh, you know, the private sector as well. Sad, but true. So we've introduced the ZK Techo MD or metal detector series uh, of products. And um, just to get an understanding of where they fit, if you look at where most of the deadliest mass shootings have occurred in the United States in the last few years, you notice they're in hotels, nightclubs, of course, all the numerous schools. And the one thing all these places have in common is that they're all soft targets. Uh, because anyone wishing to do harm does not want to be shot back at, <laughs> right? So they choose soft targets. 
where it's very unlikely anyone's going to be there to defend themselves. And that usually consists of either the classroom or or, or sporting uh, sports arenas or in um, public uh, transit. So these are the places where you'll see metal detectors popping up. And they're now surprisingly very affordable. So for any PSA members out there that have any uh, clients which are um, in the education market, or they're doing uh, event management or working with large sports arenas uh, or in even in public transit, these are the places where you should ask, um, is there a requirement for metal detectors? Because um, you know, if the PSA members don't have a history of offering metal detectors, the client may not even bring it up. And that's why I mentioned in the very beginning of the presentation, make sure you understand all the pain points of a client, understand all their, their access points which are vulnerable to ensure that you're making available all the products and services available to the PSA members. Um, now, you know, we, we hope that there haven't been any incidents where anyone's gotten injured, um, but that's why deterrence actually is the number one reason you want to put in uh, metal detectors and x-ray scanners. And uh, it's still a comparison, but it's almost like when you put beware of dog in front of your house. Um, do you have a dog? Maybe you have a dog, maybe you don't, but if you're a would-be cat burglar and you have a choice between two homes, one has uh, protected by, you know, ADT or beware of dog, and another house has no signage, well, you normally go for the one that looks like it's a, you know, uh, you know you'll, you'll have more success. So, uh, metal detectors serve as a tremendous deterrence to anyone that would be uh, uh, even conceiving of doing any harm to anyone inside the school. So how do they work? Um, to some people, it's a mystery, but it's really a very simple um, process. Electromagnetism is how all metal detectors work. And um, it's very, very simple. Um, what you might not realize is inside the walls of these metal detectors are these um, wrapped up uh, copper coils. And when you add electricity to them, they create a electromagnetic field. And then when anyone passes through that field that has any metal, it disrupts that electrical flow and then sets off a corresponding uh, audio alarm or a visual alarm. Here in the slide, you can see that there are numerous LEDs that are flashing. And the LED will flash where it sees the metal. If uh, the metal was perhaps in, uh, um, in your sock, then only the LED on the bottom will light up, depending if it was on the left or the right. Uh, here's a short video just to give you an example of uh, how these LEDs and the alarms uh, go off. You can see there's a coin on that stick. Here we have a 33, I'm sorry, 18 zone metal detector. And the coin is in the middle, which is why the LEDs on both sides are lighting up. You can see as the coin is dropped down, the LED lights associated uh, with that the coin lower and lower will light up. Lastly, the gentleman is holding it. Oh, not just yet. So now the coin is centered on the lowest possible uh, distance. And notice now, when the coin is held to one side, only one LED lights up. So that's the same principle by which all metal detectors work. Um, I haven't shown you anything different than ZK Teco's metal detectors, although I assure you uh, we do have some competitive advantages. So you need now to look at what concealed medical objects are you looking for. You're looking for guns and bars and knives, um, of course, but um, you also don't want the metal detector to go off when it experiences, you know, uh, pants, belts, or uh, cigarette lighters, or you know, other types of metals. Because really the main point behind a metal detector is you want to maximize throughput of your visitors. You don't want to hold them up with false alarms, while at the same time assuring that all these metal objects are stopped. And that's why you need to look at how many detection zones do you need in a metal detector and what sensitivity threshold do you wish to set it at. And then, of course, what meets your budget. So no different than any other vendor that, of metal detectors. Um, six detection zones is the least expensive, but then there's 18 zones, and now more popular are 33 zones. And with ZK, you can actually now um, um, program if you want all 33 zones lit up or fewer, depending on your requirements. 
uh, the more detection zones you have, the faster you'll be able to identify where that metal object is, and then you can scan them with a wand. Um, if you only have a six zone detector, well, you may have to scan that person a lot longer, which holds up the line. With a 33, you could really um, target exactly where is that metal object on the person. Um, most of metal detectors, they of course, they've got the two walls on the side where the, coil, the uh, copper coils are, and all the intelligence is in the control module suspended above, where typically it's counting how many alarms have gone off and how many people have walked through it. As mentioned before, we've got three models. We have the WMD-118 that has six um, zones. Then we have the, the 318 that has 18 zones, and then we also include a remote control uh, with that uh, particular model. And then the 433, that's our highest model. That's got the uh, 33 overlapping zones. Sensitivity goes up to 300. Also comes with a remote control. And with the 33, you also have wheels, so it's portable. It's IP65. You also have a relay contacts. So you can wire this to a door or a turnstile. And this way, you ensure that if anyone has metal, even if they have authorization, they still cannot open up that turnstile. Here we have a close-up on the console. Again, the console primarily is counting alarms and counting people. Uh, however, we also can export that in the form of a report. And that's also helpful to know how to, to, to uh, position if you've got multiple doors, multiple access points. Where do you want to put your metal detectors? You want to put them where you have the highest traffic. And then, of course, when a metal detector goes off, you want to wand them. And most people are familiar with this process because uh, you all uh, have seen this in airports. And we also contrast all of the uh, metal detectors. So we also recommend layering your security by combining your metal detectors with turnstiles. Uh, even if you have authorization to pass through the turnstile, the turnstile can be disabled if the metal detector flags you. So we have our entrance control series of turnstiles. And they all come in various different uh, varieties. You can see we have very uh, elegant ones where aesthetics are very important, but they also can be installed outdoors for public venues. And here you see we have a variety of turnstiles and flat barriers and swing barriers and so on. So we have our flat barrier series. Those are all half height. We have our swing barrier series, again, half height. Here we have a full height turnstile where you're, uh, you're concerned with people um, tailgating, this, this tends to be very popular in uh, either subway systems or uh, prisons where you have to be ensured that no one is actually sneaking behind the other person. And then you have the extra wide ones where two people could go by. So again, layering your security. Make sure that just because a client tells you they have an interest in just turnstiles, ask them, well, what are you doing to um, you know, and improve the security. What are you doing about layering it? You should be asking about what are you doing about turnstiles, um, x-ray scanners, and so on. So here's a very, very important addition now we've added to the ZK product line. This is our ZK VAMS. It's our Visitor Authentication Management System. And it's important to understand why we've introduced this. Now, a lot of people are familiar with traditional visitor management systems, and basically um, they record the usage of a facility by specific visitors and you know, provides documentation of the whereabouts. Um, often it's in a, a record book, and now um, more recently we're seeing electronic versions of this. So it does away with the record book, so the auditing is better. The challenge, though, is with these visitor management systems, you're still leaving up to the visitor to prove who they are. The visitor will typically display their own driver's license or their own ID card. So you're really trusting the visitor um, with regards to who they are. And that's the vulnerability of today's uh, visitor management systems. Now, there's a huge market for visitor management if you haven't actually come across it yourself. In 2015, it was estimated to be about $1.2 billion. It's anticipated to grow to over $6.3 billion by 2025. So if you're not asking clients what they're doing for visitor management, this is a huge opportunity. And again, uh, you don't want to leave any money on the table. And here's what you really need to focus on. Um, all the years, we all know that security spending has been you know, going up like crazy, from $7 billion to $96 billion. A lot of that's going into cameras and security guards. But really, if you're putting all your money into surveillance cameras and security guards, 
but you're still allowing the visitors to prove their own identity, that's a huge gap. And it's almost, you consider it a waste of money. Imagine you have all this investment in surveillance and security guards, and then someone with a falsified driver's license does something terrible within the facility, injures people or steals something. So that's why it's so important now to add authentication into your visitor management system. And that's truly what's unique of the ZK Techo uh, Visitor Authentication Management System. Just to give you a little bit of credibility, though it's only a recent introduction here in the United States, we've had tremendous success with the system overseas. Currently, we have over 150,000 visitors, repeat visitors in our system. We're the first ones to introduce a mobile app to complement it. Over 13 countries are using our visitor authentication management system. And we have over 350 clients worldwide. Um, and we have active sales in overseas market. It's only new now to the U.S. market. And if you look at some of the clients, again, these are the U.S. multinationals located in other countries, FedEx, IKEA, uh, P&G, Nestle's, and so on. So VAMS truly is a simple and efficient authentication system that can be customized based on your requirements. And as mentioned before, it's unique because we, we, it only um, it ensures the authentication of the person. We don't leave it up to the person visiting. We ensure that they are who they are. And this prevents imposters from entering the room. How does it work? Well, it's very simple. The person inside the company, they go to their phone or their computer, they create an appointment, and that generates a QR code which is sent to the recipient. So now the recipient has that QR code on their phone. And now when the, the visitor visits the building, they show the QR code which proves who they are, the purpose of the meeting, and who they're visiting. And of course, the host is alerted once the visitor uh, arrives with their QR code. And then upon exiting the building, again, the visitor shows their QR code, and now they're logged out. So now you can ensure that the person who is visiting is the person who the host uh, invited. You're not leaving it up to the visitor to show their own credentials. And for walk-ins, uh, pretty much works the same way. They don't get a code sent to them, but they go to the kiosk, they um, enter in their information, they look up the host they want to go visit, the host receives a, a notification, and then the person um, is allowed in with their QR code. It's truly a win-win-win. For security managers, it offers improved security. For the visit, of course, you get much faster throughput. It's a much more pleasant environment. And of course, the host will have repeat visits from those uh, same customers. And we have various different versions depending if you're a commercial facility, if you're a corporate account, residential, or if you need high security if you're in government. We make it very simple to purchase and install. It's all cloud-based, so you have the recurring revenue. And we have our ZK Biosecurity Management software, which pulls everything together. Um, just a reminder, we've had ZK Biosecurity in the market for several years now. It supports up to 8,000 doors. Um, it has video linkage, VMS linkage. This is what PSA members want to be offering their clients who are open to changing their security. The GUI is very, very simple to use. And again, incorporates all these modules, access control, ele elevator control, visitor management, uh, video integration, and so on. We also have an app that it runs on it. I mentioned before, we've got video linkage with Hyphvision, Dawa, Hanwha, uh, VMS integration with many PSA VMS vendors, including Milestone and ONSI. So uh, this brings us to the conclusion. I want to ensure you, of course, we have the product line uh, for every single requirement that your clients might have. We have the sales support. Uh, we have our inside sales. We have 30 sales reps in the field. You've got the PSA folks to help you out. And most importantly, please, the number one uh, reason why some of uh, the PSA members tell me, why aren't they selling more of a certain product? The PSA member tells me, my client's not asking for it. Well, the client is only going to ask you for things that they're familiar with and things they know you're currently offering. So please, please remind your rookie salespeople, ensure that whenever you have the opportunity to speak to a client, which is becoming so much harder in today's crowded world, um, make sure you ask them, are you, you know, what, 
requirements do you have? Are you securing all your access points? Are you laying your security? Try to get as much information from the client as possible so now you're in a position to offer all the products and services available to you through PSA and the ZK Techo. So, Julie, um, with that, um, we have so much information, but in respect to yourself and the PSA members, I want to keep it down to 30 minutes. So that really concludes what I wanted to share with the PSA folks. Great, Larry. I did have a couple of questions that came through. Um, the first one was, are walk-through metal detectors difficult to install and operate? You know, you know, Julie. I, you know, I, whenever I hear myself answering the question in my mind before it reaches my lips, I begin laughing. I promise you, a walk-through metal detector is just as easy to install as a microwave oven. Uh, it really is. When you buy a microwave oven, there's a popcorn setting, there's a defrost setting. So all you do is you really just play around the sensitivity setting with the walk-through metal detector to find out the right level of metal detection that you wish to have if you're looking for large or small objects. And it ships in uh, the two panels and the control module, and we give you, I believe, um, six screws you turn by hand. You don't even need tools. So I assure you they're very simple to install and operate. Great, Larry. That was a great analogy. Um, okay, another question. What makes ZK Techo's metal detectors different than other brands? Uh, well, you know, Joy, again, um, great question because we never enter the market unless we either have a tremendous price advantage where we're matching features or if we're introducing new features. And with metal detectors, we're actually doing both. First of all, we are the lowest cost uh, metal detector just for, for information purposes in the U.S. Uh, Garrett usually is the only known uh, metal detector, and they are manufactured in the U.S., and they tend to be the de facto winner. But now that ZK um, Teco has our own manufacturers in the market, PSA has tremendous price advantage. And in addition to that, what's unique, because we make all these integrated layered products um, uh, you know, from, from our factory, we have, can integrate all these things. We're not just a turnstile maker. We're just not a metal detector maker. We're just not a, um, an X-ray uh, inspection scanner maker. All our devices are integrated. They all could use our biometrics. And uh, we also have additional features, uh, for, like including reporting, and we have relay contacts. So there are many advantages for both a price and feature perspective to go with our uh, new metal detectors. Excellent. Okay, one last question. Can you explain again what makes ZK VAMS different than other visitor management systems? <laughs> uh, Julie, I thank you. That that sounds like a like a question that came from you. I don't know if it uh, came from the audience so quickly, but yeah, I want to emphasize visitor management um, is so important because the more money you spend on security guards, security valence, uh, surveillance. Um, but if you're allowing visitors to come into your facility simply because they claim to be who they say, um, all that investment in security is wasted when you have one imposter that comes in and either um, uh, can injure somebody or steal something. You need to have authentication uh, in a visitor management system. You need to be assured that when, you, when a, an employee invites a guest to come to their facility, it is in fact only that guest that's, a, that's arriving. And that's why with the, with the VAM solution from ZK, the Visitor Authentication Management System, generating that QR code is so important because only the recipient has that QR code on their phone. So now you can ensure that whatever money you've invested in security, you're now protecting that investment because you won't risk having any imposters. So visitor authentication with your management system is crucial. And I, I assure you, when PSA members speak to their clients and ask them what they're doing for visitor management, the PSA member is going to have a tremendous story to tell that client. They're going to naturally be able to create a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in that client's mind. And that client is going to want to hear from that PSA member how the use of visitor authentication can, uh, can ensure their uh, uh, greater security and safety in the facility. Excellent. This has been incredibly informative. And that looks like that's all the questions that we have for today. If you'd like to review this presentation again or pass it along, we'll have a recorded version of it posted very soon. You can find it by, by visiting psaeducation.com. Create a free account. Get started accessing all of PSA's educational content. Thank you very much, Larry Reed of ZK Techo USA. His contact information is posted here for any questions after today's presentation. Please visit our website, that's psaeducation.com, to be sure that you're leveraging all of PSA's educational content. 
This will conclude today's presentation. Thank you again, Larry. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye now.